special guest tonight. In fact, I'm kind of a groupie. He is a big star and we've had him on before because he's a great artist uh, in a performing arena. But tonight I have him as a special guest. Welcome David Britt because you are an entrepreneur. <laughs> I love it. It's so great to be here. Thank you so much for oh, having me. I'm so honored. It's been too long. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we were talking about that. It's been eight years. I know. I mean, how did that happen? Really quick. <laughs> it seems like yesterday. <laughs> I know, I know. So I'm in awe of you. I kind of followed your career, and I'm a big fan. So you have a new development where something that is life-changing and something that who would ever think of but the famous David Britt. So <laughs> tell our audience what you've invented and sure. your thought process. Well, first of all, let me say again, thank you for having me. You've always yeah. been so awesome, and it's, it's just it's really neat to be back here. It brings back a lot of memories. Thank you. Um, spider Grip is my new invention and I say new it's been out for you know just a little while a few years mm -hmm. but it all started with a simple phone call from a friend of mine who happened to be walking into the restroom of a very nice restaurant and startled somebody and they dropped their phone in the one place that you don't want to drop your phone and I got a phone call lots of water right <laughs> lots of water <laughs> I think I know where we're going with that story and I, and I got the phone call and he said, David, I've got an idea. He goes, we've got to figure out a way to keep people from dropping their phones. Mm -hmm. Tell me what happened. He said, do you think you can come up with an idea, then something? I said, let me think on that one. <laughs> and my daughter was 12 at the time. Mm -hmm. She'll be 18 in a couple months. And she had just gotten her first phone. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, those phones are expensive. How can we keep that in your hand and not on the ground? Mm -hmm. And so I started draw, drawing out images and, and, and pictures, and I'm not a great drawer by any stretch. Are you an engineer by trade? Not at all. Okay. Just, just Music clarify. background, real estate background, <laughs> was a tennis player throughout my former life, but not an engineer. And you don't want to see any pictures I've drawn, I can promise you. <laughs> <laughs> my kids can draw. I can't. And so I, I think I thought of it a little bit differently than an engineer would. I right. started thinking about how could you hold your phone naturally where it feels comfortable. Right. Where, you know but you're not gonna drop your phone. And so one thing led to another. Our, our, our engineers and designers right here in Charlotte, and just who can believe they're right here. Networking. So right. found in Venice and started working with them, got our group together. And next thing you know, we have spider grip, which is obviously the, this, the strength of a, the grip of a spider is right. pretty strong. Pretty strong. And so, so yeah. like Spider-Man. So I love it. Yeah. But it's very different because yes. if you want to kind of demonstrate, sure. it folds down, correct? Yes. It twists, it turns. It does all the things that uh, are creative and different. Exactly. So, you know, spider grip is different than your traditional phone grip. There's right. obviously some other phone grips out there you kind of have to use your fingers spreading apart. We wanted right. to be able to hold your phone naturally. Spider Grip allows you to do that by putting your fingers inside the protective mm -hmm. straps. It rotates 360 degrees, props up as a stand, and it even lays flat, locked in place, which is right in your pocket. I love it. And so it, it's it's been just a wonderful experience. I've got some great people on my team, and it's just been a blast. So I'm gonna stop you on that. Sure. So my friend could probably call me and say, oh my gosh, I dropped my phone. And Deborah, could you help me come up with something that would allow that not to happen again? And so I would laugh for two seconds and say, no way. But you took on that task because you're not an inventor. That's not something you've ever, ever, yeah. ever entered the thoughts of doing. So yeah. that is a big venture, David. It was a, it was a very big venture. And it's, I've always I've loved doing new things. Right. And so before music, I was writing books. And right. I never written a book before. Mm -hmm. Then I decided to write music. And then it 
turned into inventing a phone grip. I mean, who would have ever guessed right. that? But I think, you know, I love new ideas. I love thinking outside the box. And I love challenging myself to see what can I do next. And I love trying to show my children that. Mm -hmm. To show, hey, you can do it's anything if you put your mind to it. Mm -hmm. You can do anything. And so it's, it's, just, it's just been a, a wonderful experience. And, and, you know, we've got people all over the country and outside of the United States who, who use spider grip now. Okay. And now before we get a break and we're going to, I'm going to, yeah. if you don't mind, yeah. we're going to show a little of your music and about your creative talent. And when we come back, yeah. we're going to name drop and tell some, <laughs> a few people that are involved in spider grip. That sounds know. great. Okay. Now, right. This moment, enjoy this video by David Britt. that video by David Britt, She's My World, is about her. And it could be, David. That was amazing. What talent. Thank you. Thank you very much. So rewind. You're just this entrepreneur, entertainer, man about town. But you also have some great connections with your invention. Let's, name, let's do a little name dropping, shall we? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I always like giving credit where credit's due. Mm -hmm. And two of my really good friends in the music industry, without music, 
never would have known these people. Mm -hmm. DJ Stout and Shelly Fassick, people I've known for years. They introduced me to, to a very important person in my life now. Uh, they introduced me to the, to the head of Pitbull's Global Business Operations nice. just a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. And I was a big fan of Pitbull. And they said, hey, we want to introduce you to somebody. So mm -hmm. I had a conversation with that individual. Probably two weeks later, my partner and I flew down and met with Mr. Worldwide himself, Pitbull. Mm -hmm. He ended up investing into the company. So Pitbull is actually a partner in Spider Grip, which is huge. Huge. And he's the greatest guy in the world. Right. Uh, but I, you know, I definitely am thankful for my friends in music who introduced me mm -hmm. to, to his, his folks. And uh, earlier, even than that, uh, Kate Bosworth. I was uh, going to say, that's some <laughs> bragging rights. Did you get to meet her? Oh, yeah. Oh, she's gorgeous. She's, is she's, she gorgeous in person? She's. I mean, do I have to ask Breathtaking. That? Breathtaking, yes. Yeah, she's, she's beautiful inside and out. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kate's actually, she's a co-founding partner. And uh, music was the pathway that, that led to meeting mm -hmm. her as well. And just, you know, I couldn't ask for two nicer people to be a part of the company. And, of, of course, locally, uh, Alan Tate, who his father and I were very close friends for right. forever. Mm -hmm. Alan's one of the partners as well, and he's just been totally invaluable. Got a great team here in Charlotte, too. Those are so. some powerhouse names, babe. Yeah. <laughs> Real powerhouses. Great But place. they wouldn't be behind something that wasn't amazing and they felt was, was going to be very successful. So... Tell me, how did you land Walmart? How did you land Walmart? Well, we, you know, I'll tell you what, a lot of hard work. So we started talking to them, I guess, within the last year. Mm -hmm. And I actually went to Bentonville, Arkansas back in July, which is the headquarters of Walmart. Unbelievable. It, it's, it's a very small town. I, I didn't know what to think. And mm -hmm. if you've seen Hallmark movies, the my little favorite. Christmas movies. The Christmas, it's my favorite. The greatest. <laughs> it, it's, it's like this small town, but... You know, there's like probably 40,000 people there, but it's it's obviously headquarters to the largest retailer in the world. Mm -hmm. And so we met back in, in July, and we, we just got online with them here in the last few weeks. And then we're, you know, hopefully going to be moving into stores with them next spring mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, keeping our fingers crossed and all that. But great people and just so excited. Everybody in the company is just so excited about it. So let me talk to you about the invention yeah. and about having a business. Sure. So there has to be some trepidation because you're investing a lot of money in something sure. that you really believe in, but mm -hmm. not everything works, you know? Correct. So is it a lot of give and take and a lot of like anxiety? And then finally, <laughs> when you hear a name like Walmart, you sure. know, you're thinking, okay, maybe it's all going to pay off. I mean, walk me through those steps. I'll tell you what, you know, I, I, I think the best way to describe it is if you've been on a roller coaster before. Emotional roller coaster, exactly. It is a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, uh, being an athlete growing up helped prepare me for a lot of this, playing collegiate and pro sports with tennis and being out there by yourself right. and having to learn when you're down how to get back up. And, you know, every day is a different day. You'll have some days where it feels like we're going to, you know, reach the moon. Right. We're hitting so high. And other days you're like, okay. Is this going where I think it's going to go? Mm -hmm. it, but that's with any startup company. And right. so it's been like that from the beginning. Of course, now we've had a lot of success. We've been on national TV a couple different times. We've, right. we've had some really great things happen mm -hmm. for us and some great people involved. So we've, we've had a lot of ups for sure. Right. But it does, you know, to say it's come without stress, that would be a total lie. <laughs> right, because even if you have the best investors in the world and the best names, yes. if the product doesn't sell, that really doesn't matter. It, people actually have to like the product. Right. You know, it, uh -huh. they're, you know you've, you've got to market it. You've got to advertise it. You've got to be out there all the time. I mean, right. I eat and breathe and, and live mm -hmm. spider grip all the time. And so, and I love it. It's, right. it's something I'm very passionate about. And, uh, but it's, yeah, it's one of those things that you right. you have to be up for the challenge. Mm -hmm. you, you, you watch you watch people, anybody who's ever invented something, no matter what we have. Right. I mean, they went through a lot to get right. there. The ups and the downs. The ups but and the downs. I will have to say, the name is fabulous. Spider Grip and the way you spell it. Yeah. I love it. we got like the, the double eyes in both names. I always tell yeah. people, if you don't see the double eyes, it's not the real thing. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> well, I'm so proud of you and all that you're doing. We're Thank so, you so much. excited from your busy career that you stopped by the set tonight. We're all, I'm your biggest fan. So well, I'm a fan Thank of yours. You. And thank you so much for having me. This has been great. Thank you, David. Thank you. And just like David Britt, entrepreneur, entertainer, he followed his dreams and so can you. Ride that roller coaster and never give up. To view this entire episode or to view other past episodes, please visit our podcast site at DebraKennedyShow.com. Tonight we have on set one of the most beautiful women in America, especially in North Carolina, 
Mrs. North Carolina American, Katie Clogberg. We're so excited to have you as a guest Thank tonight. You. I'm so excited to be here, Deborah. We're gonna have fun tonight. We are. So, we're gonna have just a blast. When you walk through the door, I could just tell your energy you. was contagious, and Thank you're you. gorgeous on the outside, but on the inside, your light shines through. So I'm honored to have you. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. So tell me a little bit about your story. Yeah. So I am a wife of 11 years. I'm a mom. I'm a photographer, and um, oddly enough, I'm a wig fluencer. So mm -hmm. I am breaking the stigma of alternative hair. So I think. Um, you know, as women, our hair is our identity. It's how we feel beautiful. It's what makes us us, right? Uh -huh. Well, when you lose your hair or you don't have those long, luscious locks that we all wish to have, <laughs> like you, um, you know, we felt shame and we feel that we're not as beautiful as we are. And so I influence on wigs and I share my hair loss story and my, um, my love for wigs with the world. What a story you have yeah. on Insta every day. Every day. Every day. I every love day it. Every day without fail. You have this energy and you unveil a new wig. Yes. And you put it on in front of your audience. Yeah. And everything looks fabulous Thank on you. you. But what an inspiring story because it is our identity. It is. It really truly is. Yeah. And sadly enough, a lot of women really don't know how to navigate the world of right. wigs. Right. So this is something that helps other women, but it also helps those that have hair to shine. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. So when I first came out saying that I wore wigs, I was terrified. I knew nothing about wigs. I knew nothing about sharing my journey, but I had nowhere else to go. I didn't mm -hmm. know what a wig grip was. I didn't know how to tell the difference between a great wig and a bad wig or toppers or extensions or anything. And I just was very authentic in my journey and sharing mm -hmm. my story. And it's evolved over the last four years into this incredible opportunity that I'm given. And um, so many women around the world message daily saying, thank you for sharing your story because we don't know what we don't know. Mm -hmm. And when you're afraid to talk about something, where do you go? Right. You're, you're such an online. influencer on that. Thank you. Uh, it's like just a megaphone. So was that part of your interview when you were in the pageant just sharing the story? It and I'm was. sure it captivated the judges. Tell me what you shared with the judges about your journey. Yeah. So, um, you know, my mission in life is to just empower women and to, to have us lead a life that is truly joyful and something we're proud of. And, um, you know, for me, hiding from the areas that I'm not so proud of in my life. We have all gone through difficulties and Absolutely. the current difficulty in my life is, is hair loss and what I'm dealing with. Mm -hmm. And so being able to share my heart with the judges and just tell them that no matter what your struggle is, you know, when we embrace the change and we embrace the opportunities that can come from that, so many possibilities come to light mm -hmm. and so many options are ahead of you and in, in front of you. And I think that went over very well with them because who can't relate to that? Maybe Absolutely. it's not hair loss. Maybe mm -hmm. it's, um, you know, infertility. Maybe it's drug addiction. Whatever it is, we can all relate to the humanity and, and um, just vulnerability that we all go through. So I think when you say relate, I was just talking to my makeup artist about obstacles in life and how it is a roller coaster. It like it really is. And you'll have all these great things happen and then there'll be a bump and it'll be a downhill coast. Yes. And you'll have a lot of obstacles that happen that you have to overcome. Yeah. But isn't that what makes us stronger? And it as is. women, I feel like we have the really great navigating tool to talk to each other and lift each other up, we which do. is a valuable tool. Totally, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna take a quick break okay. and see some pictures and then I'm gonna come back and hear more about you. Sounds Katie. great, thank you. We'll take a break and see these fabulous pictures of Mrs. North Carolina American. <laughs> what memories of a lifetime it was such a Beautiful. wonderful experience so we were talking about women and lifting each other up before we went to break 
Uh, and we were talking about why all women are not able to lift each other up. And we were talking about some women are just jealous by human nature. Mm -hmm. Some women uh, don't see the best in others, mm -hmm. which is very sad and tragic. Mm -hmm. I think it stems from insecurity. I mm -hmm. think that we're all our own worst critics. And again, going on that vulnerability thing, if we would just share with other women, we would find a lot more we yeah. have in common than in which we don't, right? Right, um, absolutely. And I think as women, you know, that's the beauty of friendships. We need to lift each other up and we need to continue to challenge each other and motivate mm -hmm. each other. But there's a fine line and a balance between doing that in a healthy way. Right, absolutely. And I think pageant women lift each other up. I agree. You know, when I mm -hmm. first started, so I've only been doing pageants since 2018. Right. So I did not have this longevity career growing up in pageantry. And I will be honest, I was very nervous that the women would be catty and it would be like what we see in the movies. Mm -hmm. It is so opposite of that. Every single woman I have met over the last, what, six, seven years has been a game changer in her community. They have been inspirations in whatever their journey is. That everyone has just been so wonderful mm -hmm. and so genuine Absolutely. that it's been a wonderful experience. And I think the pageant world is a tool to you know gain notoriety, but yeah. it's also a tool to open yourself up to other things like mm -hmm. your influencing, right? You it, know, and the it world is our new life. Yes. It really is. It's and great. I think your mind is so powerful yeah. in that whatever you think you can do, you can do. Like you said, you had never ventured into pageants, no. and you're like, I can do this. Yeah. I mean, I'm a little, you know, apprehensive. Yeah. But you I'm shined. So glad I did it. Mm -hmm. I truly could not encourage women, join us on May 5th this year, come compete, it will change your life. Mm -hmm. Regardless if you win the crown, if you don't win the crown, you will learn so much about yourself on this journey. You will push yourself to limits that you did not think were possible. Right. Um, it's just, it's it's an amazing experience. Well, it's a powerful tool. I think that, you know, when you engage other women mm -hmm. and you just share your stories, yeah. and like you said, being very vulnerable, yeah. I think it's a game changer. And I think pageants do change the world, but you're changing the world with a lot of your influencing and your story. Thank so you. what can we see next from you, Katie? Oh, gosh, I don't know. I have... A book, of a, course, coming yeah, out. You know, that's actually on, that is on the horizon. <laughs> um, there is a lot that I want to do in the wig fluencing world. Mm -hmm. um, I think like Netflix, uh -huh. but for wigs and for right. tutorials and such, because I think that would be um, a wonderful asset and tool for women. And just traveling and seeing the world, mm -hmm. showing my son the world with my husband. We have, we just, we're so blessed and so lucky to do what we get to do every single day. Mm -hmm. And I just, I want to share that. Now, is your son, what does he think about his mom being a wig plant? He loves it. I love it. He loves it. There's only one wig he does not like, and he's very, very clear about that. I'm going to go back to your Instagram. You, yes, you will quickly find okay. what it is. He was he was so embarrassed he didn't want me to walk into the tennis center. He goes, Mom, don't come back until you have a better wig on. <laughs> Swear to God, not making that up. But he loves 99% of them, and he has his favorites, and... You know, he'll, um, if I'm going on a school field trip with him, he'll be like, oh, mom, can, they all have names. Can you wear Yvette today? Because I really want you to meet, you know, Abby tonight. Oh, that is so cute. Well, we're going to wrap up the interview, but I do want you to talk to women out there that are navigating some type of change. Yes. You went through hair loss mm -hmm. and it was disappointing. And I'm sure at some point, a low point for you. Oh, yeah. But you were able to turn that around. And look, you're wearing a beautiful crown and being a wig influencer across yeah. America. Yeah. So give our other our women out there that are in our audience some words of advice. Yeah, you know, the best advice that I have is take every challenging situation and find the positive in it because even as hard as our hardest days are, there is something silver lining in there. And when you hold on to that and you use that as your driving force, everything becomes possible again and you start seeing the joy in life. And that's what life is about, living joyfully. You're so inspiring. Thank you. I love you. Will, Thank will you. you come back and be a guest? I would love to. Aww. Thank you so much, Deborah. Katie, she is uplifting. She's beautiful inside and out. And she is changing the world. Remember, when you fall down, it's all about getting back up. Hey, guys. I'm Valerie from Be Faith Yoga. And today I'm going to take you through a quick beginner sun salutation sequence. So one of my favorite things about sun salutation is it's a great way to start doing yoga. It tackles all of your core muscles and it really teaches you to link your breath to movement. So let's get started. 
gonna move to the top of the mat here, coming to the top. You're just gonna put your feet about hip distance apart and then lengthen through your back. Roll your shoulders back and down. And on the inhale, just rise your fingertips up toward the sky. Exhale, release your hips, release your back, fold forward. Bring your fingertips down to the ground. Inhale, step your right foot straight back. And on the exhale, bring your left foot straight back to meet your right. Really press your sit bones into the air on this down dog here. And let your chest really sink toward your thighs. On the inhale, lift your right toes up toward the sky. Point your toes. And on the exhale, bring your right foot in between your hands. Inhale, bring your left foot up to meet your right. And on the exhale, slowly roll your back up until you get back into mountain pose. Let's do that again on the opposite side. Inhale, arms up to the sky. Exhale, fold forward. Keep everything in the center here. Release your spine. Inhale, left foot back to down dog. Exhale, right foot comes back to down dog. Those sit bones are in the air. Really feel that down dog here. Inhale, put your left toe up toward the sky. Exhale, bring your left foot in between your hands. Inhale, right foot comes up to meet your left. And on the exhale, let's roll that spine out. One more time, rolling up. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, folding forward. Coming back up to standing. So that is a beginner sun salutation. It's a really good thing to start out with if you're not super familiar with yoga. And it is a great way to get warmed up in the morning or to release some stress in the evening. To view this entire episode or to view other past episodes, please visit our podcast site at DebraKennedyShow.com. You can view the complete episodes right on the website or subscribe to the show via iTunes or your favorite podcatcher. Thanks for watching. So just look inside